Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and today, well, I don't actually know what we're doing today. I'm being joined by a special guest who's bringing something along with them. Uh, I will mention that I am a year older today, so perhaps it's cake, which would be awesome for me, but maybe not so exciting for you guys. Anyway, uh, let's bring in the guest and see what they have. Oh, you've got two stools now. I do. Right. Isn't that useful? It is very useful when I invite myself over. Take a seat, good sir. Thank you. How are you, mate? All right, I'm even in frame. Yeah. G'day, Internet. Uh, so today is this guy's birthday. Uh, he turns the big four. Oh my God, I'm old. Which Thanks. don't want. That's all right. Don't worry. I reached there a few years ago. <laughs> so what do you get? A just turned forty year old who has a thing for old Commodores. An Atari. No. Guess we're about to find out. <laughs> it's an old Commodore, but it's <laughs> not an Amiga or a Commodore 64. <laughs> All right, uh, it is a Commodore 386 of some sort. It is. Cool. Yeah. Um, do you <laughs> want to tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> uh, I was in the local vintage collector store the other day and I saw it hiding out the back. So I said to Jamie, um, what's the story with that? And he kind of went, well, we plugged it in and it sort of worked. And I said, well, how about X amount of dollars for it? And he went, he hummed it hard a bit and he went, yeah, all right. Because I knew exactly where it would make a good home. Because <laughs> I don't think you've actually ever done a PC. Uh, no, no, no PC videos so far. Uh, so yeah, this is Probably the best start I could ask for. Yeah, Thank you. It's a Commodore PC. <laughs> yes. uh, have you got anything around that will take a VGA signal? Yes, yeah, something. Right. Uh, Give us a minute. Uh, yes, we'll set something up. We'll set something up. Don't cool. worry, we didn't plan this. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, I like sitting right behind the power supply. Yeah, just as I turn it on. And my other camera just turned off. That's okay. That's right, we'll just turn, turn that one on. Probably should have turned this on too. Yeah, that'd be useful. Mm. Uh, it's set to it's to analog TV, PC, PC. Oh, look at that! Looks broken. Fantastic. Just the way I like it. Yeah, but there's a whole <laughs> bunch of dip switches on the back of the VGA oh, okay. card. Okay, so it could so be... that could be mean anything. Yeah, uh, um, I'd have to look up what card yeah. it is and see what the dip switches do. Um, Give us five minutes to jump on Google, and we'll have another go. Yeah. <laughs> A little longer than a few minutes later. Are we still, still, still recording? We are. Oh, shit. Okay. That's fine. Alright. We found what we think are some dip switch settings. Might help. It, right. it might help. Let's see what happens. My head is being cut off. No. No, that looks about the same as before. It's booting but though. It's doing something. It's checking some RAM here. Yeah. We might have a dud video card. It is possible, and I do not have any ISA video cards. No. Alright, pull it out one more time, let me just have one more go. Right. While you do that, I do see a slight issue. It starts with a V, ends in an A. Ah. Yeah. yeah so I've got some flush cutters handy. <laughs> uh, I think I do. You, my friend, need to go. Ugh. Before anyone crucifies me, this has been from the shop to the back seat of my car and then here. Ugh. Destroyer of worlds. Uh, okay. um, so that one didn't seem to make any difference, and let's just try that one. We might get lucky, but I am seeing a good amount of green. Uh, yeah. Alright, stick that back in. Alright. Mm -mm. Go in the hole. Right. I don't think this is going to fix, and I suspect... I suspect there'll be a repair video at some point. Or the second half of this video. Yeah, well, pretty much. No, there worse. It looks kind of different. Yeah, I'm going with worse. 
I don't think it's a bad connection. No, I would we, say um, we've yeah. actually tried two, two different. Uh, I don't think it's bad to battery. I think it's a video card that looks like video RAM. I think we try and find another 16-bit um, ISA VGA card. It's probably a good idea. And just to rule this out, once we've sourced one, the video will continue from there. And shut. All right, and we are back. And yes, it has been a couple of days. What can I say? It takes a little bit long to recover these days. But Mr. Lurch did drop off another video card, so we can try this out. Uh, truth be told, we did already try this video card out. We also removed the extra RAM that's in this machine because it does have some onboard RAM. And uh, well, uh, let me just demonstrate what it does now. So um, yeah, pretty much the same. Uh, it's definitely something related to the motherboard it would seem, and the video cards seem to work as they should. So yeah, it doesn't seem to be related to the video card or video cards, but probably more related to the ISA bus and potentially that corrosion that is nearby. So I think our best bet is to get this main board out. At least that way we can inspect all this properly and get it all cleaned up and hopefully work out what kind of board this is and hopefully find some documentation online because there are also a number of jumpers on here and at the moment I don't know what most of them do. So uh, let's get this main board out and um, clean up this mess. All right, it looks like we'll have to get this support out of the way, which should then allow us to pull out this riser card. And I guess we'll have to get the hard drive out of the way. Doesn't look like the board extends under the floppy drive, so that's good. Uh, it should hopefully make things a little bit easier. I guess we'll find out. Oh yeah, and uh, apologies for the poor audio and potentially poor video at the start of this. I yeah, didn't plan on starting a video, so uh, it literally was, you know, Mr. Lurch going, hey, Get in there, turn the camera on, I've got something for you. And uh, well, here we are. <laughs> in fact, if we're lucky, might not need to remove the hard drive itself. We may be able to just leave it all um, connected to the chassis. Yes. We can just unplug it. Cool. There is our Quantum Pro Drive LPS. No idea what size it is, and there's a big controller board on the bottom. Copyright 1988. Hmm. We'll find out about that once we have an actual working video output, I guess. Uh, let's pull this card out. That should come out easily. And the connector looks perfectly fine. I don't see any issues with that. We are getting closer to revealing the main board, right? Disconnect our power. And probably should have just unplugged the hard drive from this side. I'll do that now. And then all this stuff up the front, I might just get a photo of how it's set up at the moment so I can plug it all back in properly. Cool. Saves me trying to figure it out later. All right, and we should be able to remove this entire board. Ah, all this stuff up the front is gonna get in the way. That's annoying. I don't necessarily wanna pull the whole thing off. I just wanna be able to Move some of those cables out of the way. All right, that should give us enough room to get this board out. Nice. All right, a quick tour of the board. We have a little buzzer PC speaker here. Uh, there's some onboard memory, and then we've got our RAM slots, and it looks like a couple of ROMs. Couple more RAM slots. This particular one looks to have some corrosion on that pin just there, so we'll have to get that cleaned up. Uh, there's a chips chipset. There's a number of chips chips around the board. Uh, there is a UMC uh, quad flat pack of some description. Obviously, our corroded battery area. 
and it looks like that corrosion is spread over to here so there's a little transistor at Q1 here and there is a spot for Q2 but there's actually no transistor there so yeah that could be a major problem there's a little bit of corrosion on this crystal but I'm sure it's fine and uh, yeah the corrosion is definitely spread this way so I can see that all of these solder joints around here are all dull so perhaps this machine was sort of slightly tilted up that way so the corrosion just ran down towards the back or well, the juices have run down towards the back um, yeah, a few little tantalums dotted around, but none of them went pop, so I'm guessing they're all okay. Um, but yeah, we definitely need to sort out this corrosion and uh, figure out what to do about Q2. There's also quite a bit of corrosion on this 74 LS244, which I think is a tri-state buffer. And that could be related to the ISA slots. So yeah, that's, that's definitely something we want to take a closer look at. Oh, and I think I just found Q2. Yeah, that's got some corrosion on it. Dare I say that is our Q2. Ooh, we'll have to see if that's salvageable later. I'm gonna put that in front of the monitor. I'm sure I won't forget it there. So there's still nothing obvious that tells us what this board is and uh, my knowledge about 386 machines is very limited so uh yeah it doesn't look like anything to me it just looks like a 386 board um but on the back side everything looks pretty damn good uh very clean in fact and uh the areas where the corrosion would be where's that that's going to be up this end and yes there is a little bit of green gunk around here and some dull joints so uh yeah definitely need to get that all cleaned up before we go any further so the plan of attack is to just hit the board with some q-tips soaked with vinegar and that should get the bulk of the corrosion off and then i just went back over and sprayed it with some more vinegar just to try and get into the rest of the little nooks and crannies after that i tried to tackle one of the ram sticks which was in the corroded socket and uh, even with the fiberglass pencil it just wouldn't clean up uh, a lot of the joints on that ram ic were very dull and going over them with some flux and some fresh solder didn't really help so i'm not quite sure what to do with that just yet so putting that aside, I went back to the board and just followed up with some IPA and just sprayed down everywhere that was soaked in vinegar just to try and get all the vinegar off the board because we don't want to have the opposite of the alkaline damage, which would be the acidic damage from vinegar. So uh, it's very important to get all of that vinegar back off the board once we've put it on. Now I did notice some damage to a couple of vias around the 74 LS244 so I decided to remove that from the board just so I can inspect any traces underneath that IC and yes there was definitely some damage there as well so the next step was just to scrape up all the dodgy solder masks that look like it may have corrosion underneath and reveal the copper traces and no surprise, there were a couple of broken traces and a couple of damaged vias. I also noticed that there looked to be a damaged via under the crystal, so I also had to remove that, which uh, put up a little bit of a fight, but eventually it all came off in one piece. And yes, the via underneath the crystal and the trace connecting to it uh, was also open. So armed with a little bit of magnet wire and some fresh solder and flux, I uh, restored that trace and basically ran the magnet wire back through the via just to make sure we have a good connection to everything. And then I followed that up with some UV curable solder mask so it doesn't short to the bottom of the crystal package itself. After that, it was just a case of going over all the exposed traces with some fresh solder to protect them so they don't oxidize and adding some bodge wires wherever we've lost continuity. So with any luck, everything should be reconnected and we can now reinstall the 74 LS244. All right, I've got a fresh socket installed. So uh, I think for now, we'll just try out the original uh, 74 LS244, see if that still works. I think it'll be okay usually they don't die that easily unless corrosion makes it all the way up into the legs and into the IC package I didn't bother fixing up the rest of this little circuit here it looks to be related to the battery charge circuit just based on the proximity and the size of the traces and the components there so um 
because I don't have a battery installed, uh, I don't really need to charge anything. And if I do put a battery in here, I'll probably put a little lithium cell battery that won't be able to be charged anyway. So um, yeah, I think we're ready to test this thing out, see if we get proper video output from it. I won't worry about hooking up this front panel stuff just yet. I'll just throw a couple of screws in here to hold the board in place and we'll just see if we get a proper video output first. Uh... All right, let's see what happens. We have video. There's a bunch of errors because I don't have anything else connected, but um, it seems to work. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. It looks like uh, doing all those trace repairs fixed everything, hopefully. Uh, let's throw the extra RAM back in there, see if that also still works. And I did go back over the slightly corroded one. In fact, I don't know which one it is now, but yeah, multiple passes with fresh solder and uh, desoldering braids seems to have cleaned up those contacts. I think it was this one. So um, hopefully that should work, but the contacts are sort of, they have built in redundancy because they're the same on either side of the chip. So you can see there's tiny through holes on each contact. So as long as one side uh, makes a good connection, it should work. The uh, RAM socket, I'm not too sure of, but I guess we'll find out. I just don't want to break these. Old plastic clips. I'm just gonna try and be as gentle as possible putting these in. Okay. Let's throw the video card back in and probably should hook up a keyboard as well. Right, won't worry about the hard drive just yet. Let's see what happens this time. That's probably because we don't have a battery. It's counting up the extended RAM. I think it's five megabytes in total. So one megabyte on the board and then four one megabyte RAM sticks. Let it do the slow pass to be sure. Looks good. Go into setup, have a look. See, must check some invalid. Yep, because we don't have battery or anything. But apart from that, it looks to be working. Cool, I'm not gonna mess with any of the BIOS settings just yet because no doubt I'm gonna be pulling this board out again. The entire case needs a cleanup as does this keyboard. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is pull all of this part, clean it all out, and then slowly reinstall everything, test that the drives are all working, and uh, I guess we'll go ahead and set up this system. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. We'll have to wait till next time because uh, this is more of a repair video, I guess, and it's kind of, it's a little bit all over the place. So uh, it's probably better to just start fresh again in the next video and we'll go through learn a bit more about this system and uh, yeah, take a peek at the hard drive, see if there's anything fun on there or if it even works at all. But uh, I think that should do it for this video. We probably shouldn't go any further just yet. So um, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Mr. Lurch uh, for the birthday present. Um, yes, very cool to have anything Commodore and um, yeah, a Commodore PC is something I've been interested in getting for a while. I've always looked out for those PC 10s and PC 20s, but um, it's Commodore computer. So um, I'm happy with that. Uh, anyway, I'm babbling on a bit now. So um, thank you all for watching. Uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestions on what we should try with this thing. And um, yeah, a huge thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. If you want to do the same, links to that are down in the video description. You'll get ad-free early access. Uh, but yeah, until next time, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, be sure to check out Mr. Lurch's things on YouTube. Link, subscribe, 
stuff.